Diabetes is the number one cause of kidney problems in the world. For many people, beating diabetes means beating kidney disease. What not everyone knows is that diabetes can go into remission even in people who had it for 11 years or more. Yes, with the goal of reversing diabetes and protecting our kidneys, today we will see 5 ways to beat this disease. During the last few years, there have been huge changes in the way type 2 diabetes, or T2D in short, is managed. Today, we will see the most up-to-date info about strategies, tips, supplements, and vitamins. And by the way, what I will be discussing today is going to be useful for everyone, including those without T2D. So let's start. Question, what changed about T2D management? It was previously believed that those who suffered from T2D for 6 years or more couldn't go into remission. It was something everyone believed, okay? If you had diabetes for 6 years or more, there was no going back. And guess what? Science proved that notion wrong. Most recent research proves that even patients who had type 2 diabetes for 11 years can Reverse it! And there are 5 ways to help you achieve the goal of sending T2D into remission. Don't miss our number 1 in particular because that's the fastest way in the world to cut your protein rate in half while losing weight without diet or exercise. Before that, there is a secret vitamin that has been proven extremely useful for those who want to lower their glucose levels. This nutrient was proven able to cut your glucose levels by a whopping 31.5 mg per DL in just 3 months. This will get many people really close to the target of getting T2D into remission. Now, this vitamin is especially interesting because it protects the kidneys from metabolic syndrome and hypertension while helping you lose weight. It also has antioxidant properties that fight the damaging effects of free radicals in the body. Not to mention that it acts as a natural way to reduce food cravings and appetite. I'm talking about inositol or vitamin B8. Inositol has several important functions in the body including controlling sugar and insulin levels, fat deposition, and hypertension. This works because it has a structure similar to that of sugar, but it's no caloric. In the body, it actually improves insulin absorption, which is basically saying that it fights T2D. An amazing little nutrient! But while you can get some inositol from foods such as some fruits, beans, grains, and nuts, many people seem to have too low levels of it. This is a problem especially for those with kidney issues. You see, inositol is a truly underestimated nutrient. You are not gonna find it in multivitamins and most people don't even know that it exists. It is not even considered a vitamin anymore. And the reason why inositol is no more a vitamin is because the kidneys actually produce some of it. However, for many people, only relying on what the body makes is not enough. Having low levels of inositol may cause weakness, lethargy, skin problems, insomnia, but also mental health problems, and hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia means the body accumulates too many fats, such as cholesterol and triglycerides. This may cause a worsen T2D and other metabolic conditions. It's clear that supplementing this nutrient may be very helpful for T2D or CRF. As I was saying, the kidneys produce some inositol. With CRF, natural production may decline. Question: What foods can you eat to get more inositol? Grain bread is one of the best sources. Stone ground whole grain bread contains up to 300 mg of inositol in just one slice of bread. And that's a lot! 
Just also consider that this type of bread is pretty high in phosphorus before adding it to your diet. A better option may be cantaloupe, a very healthy fruit, even if a bit rich in potassium. Other great sources of inositol include almonds but also beans, peas, and citrus fruits. Now, even if all these foods are good for you, they won't give you the same amount of inositol that was used to treat D2D in literature. So, if you are really interested in the insulin mimetic properties of inositol, it will be better to also consider a supplement. Actually, research shows that supplementing inositol in people with T2D can lower glucose levels by 31.5 mg per dl in just 3 months. In this study, HbA1c of the participants went from 8.6% down to 7.7% which is a huge improvement. In short, inositol can be used to greatly improve insulin sensitivity in people with T2T. It can lower sugar levels by 31.5 mg per dl. To achieve this, Mayo inositol 550mg and Dekyr inositol 13.8mg with folic acid 400 micrograms was supplemented twice a day for 3 months. You can easily find brands that combine the two forms of phenostyl with folic acid to give you best results on Amazon or other supplement stores. Okay guys, our next entry is a supplement that many experts are starting to consider the most powerful natural molecule in the world. It is often compared to metformin in terms of results. Before that, a very important question. Can you really reverse D2D? The concept of type 2 diabetes remission, which is getting increasing attention from researchers and clinicians, also goes by other names, including diabetes reversal or resolution. But a consensus of experts led by the ADA last year agreed on the term remission as being most accurate. Yes, while most clinicians are reluctant to consider T2D reversible, science has proven that completely reversing T2D is possible for at least 11 years after the onset of the condition. So, this is the big picture when it comes to dealing with DKD. The goal we should focus on is getting our pressure and sugar levels as close as possible to the right values. With T2D, there are two values we should care about the most. First value is fasting sugar. The ideal number is below 100 mg per dl. And also HbA1c level. HbA1c is probably the main markers of T2D severity. Remember that remission from T2D happens when your HbA1c remains below 6.5% for at least 3 months without medications. And while not everyone will be able to completely reverse their T2D, the closer you can get to this, the better. But you can be 100% sure that if you put your health first and if you do your best to get better, you are going to achieve a result. You are going to be the healthiest version of yourself. I've previously mentioned a study that changed the way we look at T2D forever. It proved that it is possible in people who had T2D for more than 6 years to reverse it. And it took just 3 months for 17 participants of this study to achieve what was previously believed impossible. Now, these 17 participants who went into remission were monitored for the following 12 months and only one of them relapsed. And that's also amazing, by the way! What they used to achieve this is a simple dietary intervention. Intermittent fasting. Today, intermittent fasting seems to be very popular as a way to lose weight and improving our metabolic parameters. This is a diet I've personally used and it's pretty easy to follow because it's a way to cut your caloric intake without altering your macros, the percentage of nutrients you get from carbs, fats, and protein. And when we think that for these 17 former diabetes sufferers, following this diet was all it took to become diabetes-free, well, you can understand why many people believe this diet is great. And I personally really love intermittent fasting as a way to lose weight. And while it definitely works, it's important to understand that intermittent fasting is very different from just skipping breakfast. 
So if you want to know more about how these 17 people got out of T2D just with one later intervention, please watch my video about it. It's up here and also down in the description. But obviously not everyone likes dieting. Hey, I perfectly get it. Dieting is not fun at all. This is why some pharmaceutical companies come up with a recently approved medication that's capable of making people lose huge amounts of weight without any dieting. Overweight people have been observed losing 15% to 18% of their body weight during clinical trials just thanks to a once a week injection. And it's not just that. This recently approved medication does also improve GFR and proteinuria, the two main markers of kidney function. More about this in a moment. Before that, a very important question. If you have T2D, should you use metformin or berberine? Clinicians commonly prescribe metformin, a completely synthetic compound, in the treatment of T2D. It's a very effective molecule, by the way. Metformin is commonly used for T2D and its main use is to lower HbA1c, but it can also assist in weight loss. Berberine, on the other hand, is what many experts consider the most powerful supplement in existence and not just for T2D. Berberine is completely natural and it has many of the same properties of metformin. This is a natural compound found in barberry and other plants and it's widely used as a supplement. It may lower fasting and post-meal glucose levels significantly and it can also help with cholesterol and hypertension. Berberine affects the body at the molecular level. Berberine is also one of the few natural weight loss pills that actually work as intended. In a study on obese individuals, those taking berberine went from obese to overweight in just 3 months. They also lost belly fat and improved many other markers. Yes, berberine can really make a difference when it comes to protecting the kidneys and it's especially powerful against T2D. What not many people know is that some clinicians are starting to consider berberine a better alternative to metformin as the first line for T2D. Incredible! This is because according to studies, berberine may reduce fasting and post-meal glucose levels by more than 30%, which is frankly amazing for a 100% natural supplement. Now guys, berberine is so powerful, it can actually interfere with some of the medications you may be taking. So be sure to use this remedy in combination with your personal journal. Take note of all your values and see if they improve. Then report to your primary healthcare provider so they can adjust your plan if needed. And maybe see if they can help you replace metformin with this safer natural remedy. Almost time for our number one. Before that, a few tips that are proven to really make a difference in managing T2D. Always stay hydrated. Drinking enough water protects the body in several ways and it's especially important for people with T2D. The kidneys need plenty of water to flush out excess sugar through urine, so grab a glass of water now! And also, choose foods with a low glycemic index. Diet is key to reverse C2D as we have seen and focusing on low glycemic index foods is key to avoid insulin spikes. While foods such as vegetables, high fat foods are always considered safe, some people will tell you to completely avoid fruits if you have T2D. That's misinformation! Even the ADA says that fruit is good for you especially in moderation and especially low glycemic fruits such as pears, apples, oranges and berries. And also, always monitor your sugar levels. Testing your sugar levels at home with a portable meter is going to help both keeping your levels under control and improving. Fact, what gets measured gets managed, especially if you use a health journal to keep track of your progress. And I've explained how to do that in my video up here. Use spices. Spices are powerful tools, especially when it comes to controlling sugar levels. Fenugreek seed, for example, can make a huge difference with insulin sensitivity. Another spice you can incorporate into your diet daily to get the best results is cinnamon. 
This spice has also been shown to help lower sugar levels, improve insulin sensitivity, and reduce HbA1c levels. Cinnamon can be added to almost any food or drink to increase the flavor and add a little kick. And also, add more fiber to your meals. Both fiber and fats are proven to slow down the absorption of sugar, protecting from a spike. But while fats are rich in calories, fiber contains none. And a good way to increase fiber consumption is taking a supplement called psyllium husk right before the main meals. Last tip, lose weight if you need to. Berberine can also help you doing this. As I was saying, berberine has one superpower that probably no other natural compound has. It can make people lose weight pretty reliably. I mean, clearly, not everyone with T2D needs to lose weight, but some do. Now, the thing is, losing weight seems to be the most effective strategy there is to control T2D. They said there are today approved medications that are capable of making people lose huge amounts of weight without any dieting. One in particular also seems to be especially useful for people with CRF. And I'm talking about... Number 1. GLP-1 Agonists So yeah, I've kept the base for last. There is a lot of buzz on social media surrounding these new GLP-1 agonists today, and I believe the hype is deserved. Imagine being able to lose weight fast, safely and without any extra dieting or exercise. And with just one injection per week. Yes, that's what these molecules are promising. But do they really work against diabetes and CRF? Okay guys, you may already know that this new class of pharmaceuticals do work against obesity. They are especially recommended in people with diabetes and in those who need to lose weight. And while there are various molecules that have been approved by the FDA as a way to lose weight, the most interesting for us is semaglutide. It's the most tested in people that also have kidney issues and well, it works. Overweight people have been observed losing 15% to 18% of their body weight during clinical trials just thanks to a single weekly injection. This also came with a huge drop in proteinuria, more than 50% in those with kidney issues. Now, this is really significant because it means their GFR is going to decline much slower. Now that their proteinuria is half, that's what it previously was. You see, proteinuria is a predictor of GFR slope. The lower the proteinuria, the slower the decline. But losing all that weight in someone who was previously obese also meant that several other markers went back into the correct range. HbA1c, sugar levels, cholesterol, and more. Yes, this is a very interesting news for a lot of people. So, if you want to know more about Ozempic, the most used GLP-1 agonist in those with kidney issues, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.